Right pretty, ain't it, Dad? Yeah. yeah. Those kids are all right. Say, Emily, who do you think is going to win the quiz prize? Why, Jimmy Dugging, of course. I'll tell you what I'll do with you. I'll bet you a buck the Hamilton kid wins it. He's got better marks. Put up or shut up. of the junior quiz. And with five contestants still in the running, it's anybody's race. These smart youngsters have given a great account of themselves, and it's going to be tough to find a question to stump any of them. And now, on with the quiz, and the next contestant is Hazel Barry. Hazel, are you a good cook? I think so, Mr. Hall. My mother taught me. Hazel, there are several portions to your question. You're to define three cooking terms. Think you can do it? I hope so. Well, I'm sure you can. The first is to parboil. When you parboil, it means you don't cook it all the way. That's right. It means to boil partly. Now, here's the second part. To baste. What does that mean? That's when you wet something in the oven all the time with water. <laughs> You've got the right idea. It means to keep moist at intervals to prevent burning. Now, here's the last one. Define consomme. Consomme is... Consomme is... It's soup. <laughs> That's pretty close, Hazel. What kind of soup? It's soup with nothing in it. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Hazel Barrett. <laughs> the next young lady is... Jane Watson. Jane, here's your question. At a certain spot in the harbor, there's a difference of 40 feet between high and low tide. Supposing a ship drawing 20 feet of water at low tide is anchored there. How much water will it draw at high tide? That's easy. Quiet, please. Let's be fair to the contestant. Think, Jane. How much water will it draw at high tide? I don't know. Oh, that's too bad, Jane. Well, we'll see if the next contestant can answer the question. Uh, Warren Hamilton. Warren, at a certain spot in the harbor, there's a difference... I remember the question, Mr. Hall, and the answer is very simple. The ship, at either high or low tide, would draw exactly the same amount of water. That is correct. Unless cargo or crew were changed between tides. Or unless it sailed from salt to fresh water. Very good, very good. And now we come to Bumps Hudson. Bumps, your question has to do with music. Do you know anything about music? Oh, I sing once in a while. <laughs> well, that's fine. Our studio pianist is going to play a familiar song. Now, you see if you can identify it. All right, Joe, will you play it for us, please? <laughs> Name it, can you sing it for us, Bumps? Okay.
How can you name the song, Bumps? No. Well, that's too bad. Well, better luck next time. Thanks a lot. And that brings us to James Dugan. Well, Jimmy, here's a question that's rather interesting. Now, listen very closely. Supposing a large steamer were frozen in the Gulf Stream, what method would you suggest to free it? Now, you could use an ice cutter. Oh, did you say Gulf Stream? Why, it never freezes there. That's right. <laughs> Now, Warren. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in checking over the final score, we find that we are left with just two contestants, James Dugan and uh, Warren Hamilton. Unfortunately, only one can win. Middleville should be proud of the splendid showing the boys and girls have made in this junior quiz hour. Now, Jimmy, the United States leads the world in the output of a certain chemical used in aviation. In fact, this chemical is found in its free state only in this country. Can you name the chemical? It's helium, and it's used for dirigibles and balloons. Very good. Now, Warren, it's your turn. You'll find me ready. This question is in three parts. You must answer each part directly. I want you to explain the meaning of three favorite American expressions. You must answer all three. The first is a bunch of fives. Sorry, I've never taken up slang. Jimmy, maybe you can tell us what a bunch of fives means. I sure can, Mr. Hall. A bunch of fives is a fist. So far, so good. Now for the second one, Jimmy. What does it mean to sock the old apple? That means get a baseball a country mile. Jimmy's gonna do it. He's gonna win. That's fine. Now for the last one, Jimmy. Just a minute, Henry. Not so fast. Let's listen to this. What does it mean when a fellow is carrying the mail? That football. But a feller's running for a touchdown. Jimmy's done it. By golly, he won. I told you he'd win. Yep. A real American boy. And now, Jimmy, I take great pleasure in presenting you with these 25 silver dollars. You certainly earned them. You had some stiff competition up here this evening. Now tell us, Jimmy, what are you going to do with all that money? Well, you see, Mr. Hall, me and some other fellers and a girl, we got a laboratory where we do lots of experiments mm -hmm. and make things. What kind of things, Jimmy? Well, we're all going to invent stuff for the United States. You know, the big defense program. And we're going to make airplanes and automobiles and tanks and, and all sorts of stuff. And we're going to give them to the government. That's because us fellers, if we want to be regular fellers, have to help the government, just like the growing up. No, you're just in time. You shouldn't have rushed, though. You're all out of breath. Oh, I had to do some things for the club. On the corner, we're having a party this afternoon. Because Jimmy... I guess he... you're pretty proud of Jimmy, aren't you, Aggie? Oh, I knew he'd win. But, um... What's the matter? Is something wrong? Oh, gosh, Mrs. Carolyn. It's Jimmy. He just don't pay no attention to me at all. Just like I wasn't there. Oh, is that it? What would you do if you were me, Mrs. Carolyn? From one woman to another? Well, I... I just sort of... Well, I... I, I try to be a big help to him, Maggie, you know, and... <laughs> we're bound to notice a sweet little girl like you sooner or later. All right, I will, Mrs. Carolyn. Do <laughs> you mind if I take Lizzie over to our laboratory where the party is? All right. Only see that she doesn't get mixed up in any of that infernal machinery of yours. Oh, I promise I won't. Pretty soon she'll be getting too heavy to carry. Oh, I don't mind carrying you with me. Honest, I don't. I'm afraid I've got to go now, Aggie. Don't you worry about the baby. I hope you have a good time, too. Thanks. I'm 
answer the bell. Yes, Mrs. Carter. Coming. How are you, darling? Let me take a look at your child. I haven't seen you in ages, and how is the baby? But I came to see Mrs. Carter about Martha. It's terribly important. Oh, but she told me that never to... Who is it, Martha? Oh, uh, it's your daughter-in-law to see you, Mrs. Carter. Tell her I'm not at home. Never mind, Martha. Why do you force your way into my house? You know very well we've nothing to say to each other. But there is something, Mrs. Carter. Something that concerns us both. Very well, then. Get to the point. If it's money you want, you're wasting your time. I expected you to say that. No, it isn't money. Mrs. Carter, I've been told by friends that the authorities are planning to take the baby away from me. Is this your work? What difference does it make whose work it is? If you can't take care of the child properly, you shouldn't have it. I've settled this question some time ago, and you very well know it. When my son married you against my will, he ceased to be my son. I know you hate me, Mrs. Carter. I can understand and forgive that. But Lawrence and the baby, why? Have you said all you've come to say? No. Where is Lawrence? Why haven't I heard from him? You're his wife. How should I know? You're the most cruel person I've ever known. You're a selfish old tyrant, Mrs. Carter. You brought us nothing but unhappiness. And I hate you for it. No, I guess I don't hate you. I feel sorry for you. You must be very lonely. Jimmy said. Say, Aggie, 
What about the ice cream and cake? Now, uh, this is our all-around-the-world short, medium, long receiving set. Very quiet. All right, we will. Congratulations, Jimmy, on winning the contest. Gee, that was fine. Gee, thanks, Martha. Mm -hmm. Oh, Pinhead and I want to talk to Mrs. Carter. What on earth for? Oh, we thought maybe we could rent the barn for our laboratory. Oh, no. No, you couldn't do that. I'm sure Mrs. Carter wouldn't rent it to you boys. Well, why not? Well, you wouldn't understand, dear. You see, 
Mrs. Carter doesn't want any children about the place at all. Gosh, that's funny. Well, we never did anything to her, Martha. Well, I know you didn't, Jimmy. But Mrs. Carter is hard to understand sometimes. I think somebody must have hurt her once. Maybe her own boy. And she's just like that, I guess. Gee, I feel sorry for her. I... Jimmy, look. What are these boys doing here? Don't be upset, Mrs. Carter. They, they came on business. What business could they have with you? It's with you. We just told Martha we came here to rent your barn. We've got it's money. It's not for rent. There never will be. Now go home. You won't change your mind. No. Well, we just wanted to ask. Thanks, Martha. Thanks just the same, Mrs. Carter. Bye, Martha. Why did you let them in here? They didn't mean any harm. And I think you'd be a lot happier, Mrs. Carter, if you'd let somebody into your life. Don't interfere, Martha. I'll bundle you off, too. Make up your mind yet, foot in the head? Not yet, Emery. We gotta wait for Jimmy. Mm, I was afraid of that. Hello, everybody! Oh, oh hi, Jimmy. Hi, hi. Uh, hiya, Emery. Hi, Jimmy. How'd you make out, Jimmy? When do we take over the barn? Yeah, what about that? We don't. We don't is right. She wouldn't even talk to us. We didn't even get a chance to make an offer. Martha says she don't like kids or something. Why, that old fossil, she ought to be ashamed of herself. Hey, Jimmy. Here it is. All right, Pinhead, relax. Let me handle this. No, Pinhead. This isn't any good. It's awful old. I guess I didn't get a good look at it before. You couldn't use this for your seagull and tank. Could you, Pudding? Oh, boy, me? sure I could. And what's wrong with it? I took it off of my own boat down on the river. Well, there ain't many people want a thing like uh, this. Now, um, look at these skates. Skates? Hmm. Now, if you was thinking of trading some good, I mean really good skates for an old motor, well... <laughs> no. No. Nothing doing.
to do something that would bring him back. Yeah, but what could we do? If we could find him, maybe we could get him to come back. Yeah, that's right. Hey, fellas, stay a minute. Aggie just got an idea that maybe Mrs. Carter will let us rent the barn if we could get her son Larry to come home. Where'd he go? We'd have to know that, wouldn't we? Do you know, Aggie? I heard Carolyn say that he went to New York. Swell, we'll write to New York. Well, what address are we going to use? Pinhead spoils everything. Say, the police ought to know where he is. Who call the police? They won't find out you broke Henry Brown's window. Don't worry. Now, let's try to figure this out, fellas. Now, now how do you write the police? They're policemen. He don't know how to write letters, Jimmy. Dear policemen. Don't you think we ought to write to the police commissioner? We'll try that. Uh -huh. Dear Mr. Commissioner. I got that. I am very anxious to find Mr. Lawrence Carter for reasons that are very secret. Jimmy, supper's ready. Better come right away. All right, Molly. I guess we'll have to break it up, fellas. Fellas always gotta go home. This money's in vent. Oh, come on, let's go. So long, Jimmy. Well, see you later, guys. Bye, Jimmy. I wish you would find Lawrence Carter and let me know. He went to New York about a year ago. Not so fast, Jimmy. <laughs>
Jimmy, I gotta tell you something. Now what's the matter? Ain't we got enough trouble? Jimmy, I gotta report that the regular fellers is bankrupt. We owe 37 cents. Going all right? Ah, things are going fair, Emery. Yes, fair. As a matter of fact, we kind of decided not to invent tanks anymore. Oh. Yeah, Emery. Say, you know, this was a pretty good kicker at that. You don't say. Uh-huh. And, well, we thought as long as we weren't going to have no more use for it, well, we thought we might do you a favor. A favor? What kind of a favor? Well, uh, are you telling Jimmy? How'd you like to buy it back from us? Gee. No, nothing doing. You fellas made a deal and you gotta stick to it. Jimmy, Jimmy. Well, Jimmy, I just heard the most terrible news. What is it, Eddie? What's wrong? Jimmy, I just heard that they're gonna take Carolyn's baby away from us. We can't let anybody do that, Jimmy. Gosh, that's bad. Didn't you ever get an answer from the New York police about Larry Carter? No. They must be too busy to bother writing us. But we gotta get to him somehow. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Carter? I knew him all of his life. I remember the trouble that he had with his mom. I lent him the money to get married on. And by golly, he's the only one that ever paid me back. Yes? Yep, 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 yep. Sent me uh, two dollars from New York City. Oh, I just run across the letter today. There it is. Can I see it, Emery? Sure. Chief Fellers, here it is, the address. Criterion Apartments, New York. Emery, could we borrow this for a little while, please? Oh, I don't see why not. But don't forget to bring it back. We won't. Come on, Aggie, we got work to do. Yes, we sure do. Yeah, uh, now, Emery, about the kicker. How about five dollars? Nope. No, no, nothing doing. We got two dollars. Yeah, we ain't bankrupt now. Boy, that's some. Don't forget to turn that money over to the treasury. Quiet, you. I'm the chief inventioner now. Come on. <laughs> Mr. Lawrence Carter, Criterion Apartments, New York. Dear Lawrence, Pinhead, why don't you go away? Go on. You bother me. Dear Lawrence. Well, I can talk to you at least. You listen anyway. They're downstairs writing a lot of fool letters. What good's that gonna do? No good, that's what. What'd your father have to go wait for in the first place? I've got it. I know what I'll do. I'll fix everything. How'd you like to live at your grandma's house, huh? Nobody else can cheer her up. Maybe you can. I'm gonna take you there right now. Didn't you turn it over to the police? You have no right to keep it here. But we can look after the child just for tonight. I don't know why. I'm going to see that whoever did it will be arrested and punished.
Everything is going to be all right, Carolyn. I'll try to answer your questions now. Has anyone threatened you? No. Why should anybody want to take my child? Oh, take it easy now. Uh, we'll find out who it was. Every man in the department is out on search. Suppose something's happened to him. Suppose she's ill. I'm so helpless just sitting here waiting and waiting. It's your fault. I suppose I'll be up all night with this crying brat. I'll take care of the child. Go back to your room. I'm awake now. What difference does it make? Don't stand there gaping. Go on, go on. Go on. That's what it is. I suppose I'll have to take care of you. Where's the morning paper? Oh, the morning paper. You want the... Uh, what kind of gibberish is that? You know what I mean. Oh, um, here it is. So. No wonder you want to keep it from me. It's her child. I'll teach her a lesson. Call the police at once. Mrs. Carter, don't do anything you'll be sorry for. Will you call the police or shall I? I'll call. Baby safe, Dan. Sure, Caroline. Now don't you worry. Gosh, something must have happened. Yeah. Gee, I wish I was in that car. Me too. Gosh, I almost forgot. I gotta get home and practice my violin. So long, fellas. Maybe Pinhead ain't feeling so well. <laughs> You're an officer of the law. I want you to arrest this woman. But, Mrs. Carter, why do we have to do that? She abandoned her child, and it's a criminal offense. I'm going to see that she's punished if I have to go to the governor of the state myself about it. You know that's not true, Mrs. Carter. You stole a child just so you could accuse me of deserting it. I don't want to hear any more about this. Are you going to do your duty or not? I'm sorry, Carolyn. It'll be just a formality, but you'll have to go to the police station with me. You can't arrest her. Martha! Did you let him in this house? No, she didn't, Mrs. Carter. I came in myself, because I know what happened to the baby. Oh, it was all my idea. I thought if you had someone like that, you wouldn't be so miserable. And Mrs. Carolyn, she has a hard enough time taking care of the baby. And you've got plenty of money. Oh, the fellers. Well, I said you had a baby once, but it isn't here anymore. And I thought maybe you'd like to have another one in its place. Now you know the whole thing. 
And you can't have Mrs. Carolyn arrested for something she didn't do, because I did it! what he said? Oh, there's the doorbell, Annie. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye. Hello, Mr. Flynn. How are you? Good evening, Molly. Are the folks home? Well, gosh, Mr. Flynn, you just missed them. They went to a movie. And left you all alone, eh? No, Jimmy's here. Well, in that case, I'll talk to Jimmy for a minute. All right, Mr. Flynn, just make yourself at home. Oh, Jimmy, come out here a minute. Mr. Flynn's here to see you. Hello, Mr. Flynn. Hello there, young fella. Well, <laughs> it's quite an outfit you're wearing, son. Gee, I was expecting company. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Go on. Can't you see Mr. Flynn and I got business together? Business. Something you want me to do for you, Mr. Flynn? No, Jimmy. I just want to ask you a few questions. Is this the letter or a copy of the letter you sent to the New York Police Commissioner? Yes. Well, the New York Police sent it to me. Told me to check up on the person who wrote it. Now, there's more behind this than you might know, Jimmy. Why did you write about Larry Carter? We didn't mean any harm, Mr. Flynn. We just did it on account of Carolyn and everything. That's all. Really. Oh, I see. Well, you boys certainly figure things out. Jimmy, what caused all the excitement is the fact that the New York police have Larry Carter in prison. But, but I didn't know that. Honest, I didn't. Well, I guess nobody in Middleville knew it either. Well, that's all I came to find out. Flynn. Yes, Jimmy. You don't have to tell Carolyn about this, do you? No, there's no reason for me to tell her. I wish you wouldn't. All right then, Jimmy. It's a secret between you and me. You're a swell fella, Mr. Flynn. Well, I want to be your friend. Listen, if you ever have any more problems like this, come to me and I'll help you. That's great. And we're going to keep this secret? Mum's the word. <laughs> Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Mr. Flynn. How do you like Kingpin in the fort? Kingpin in the fourth. Listen to this. You mean that letter to Larry Carter? Yeah. Dear Larry, maybe you get lonesome sometimes and wish you'd hear something about home. I see your wife almost every day. The kid was married. And the baby, too. They certainly wish you were here. You'll be surprised to see what a beautiful baby it is. Your mother's not happy either. Maybe you think she is because she has so much money. But I guess she doesn't care so much about that as have you come home. Why don't you come back to Middleville? What was that part about the money? Yeah. That chump has got an old lady up there loaded with dough, and we pushed them around. So what? So what? Why, your luggage? You're one horse down. So what? Country will be good for you. What about this guy that wrote the letter? Yeah. Hey, Larry never mentioned anything about him. Jimmy Dugan. Well, it's probably some country dope. I'm not worried about him. Uh, what's the setup? Well, it's a cinch. We're just old, old friends of Larry Carter's. Old, old. <laughs> old, old friends. <laughs> <laughs>
special enemy catcher. What's that? I'll show you. Come here. Now pretend like you're the enemy and walk straight across there. Ah, oh, you didn't walk right. Let me show you. What kind of an invention is that? You got caught in it yourself. Works, don't it? Come here. After you catch the enemy by the ankles, all you have to do is come over and make him prisoner. And I got my secret lock here, and I unlock it myself, which nobody knows how to do it except me. But you didn't catch me, did you? Oh. You think we can get a patent on these things? Oh, go on. They invented airplanes before us. Gee whiz, I gotta fix this. Wait a second, fellas. I see some. Oh, my plane, Skeeter. Martha! Oh, hello, Jimmy. Martha, whose car is that? Larry's friends. Larry's coming home in a few days, and they're going to meet him here. Isn't that wonderful? Are you sure they said Larry was coming home? Well, I was right there when they told Mrs. Carter about it. That's funny. What's so funny about it? I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, Martha. I'll see you later. Thanks. Okay. Fellas, something serious has come up, so I gotta let you in on it. But you gotta promise to keep it secret. Yeah, well, oh, sure. sure. I promise to keep it secret myself, but I gotta tell you. You know, Martha said today that the two men at Hetty Carter's house were waiting for Larry to come home. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, Larry isn't coming home. How do you know that, Jimmy? Because he's in prison. Who told you that? Dan Flynn told me. He got a letter from the New York Police Commissioner. And you know what that means, fellas. These two men must know something about Larry. Why did they go to Mrs. Carter's for? Do you suppose they lied to her, Jimmy? Maybe. But anyway, we can't tell anybody about this yet. We gotta handle it ourselves. How are we gonna do that? We have to watch those men. Let's tell them day and night. You know you can't stay out after nine o'clock. We'll divide up into details. And two of us will always be on the lookout. Anyway, until nine o'clock. Unless we can think of an excuse to stay up later. <laughs> <laughs> Have me cornered. Afraid I have. <laughs> <laughs> That's another game you win, Ma. Did Larry ever tell you I've always been the champion at Middleville? He never got tired of mentioning it, and I believe him now. Larry was the only one who could beat me. Oh? Wait till he comes home. <laughs> then you'll see the fur fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Larry's a smart fellow. Just the same way in business. Always beats the other fellow to the punch. Yeah, he's sure all right, Mrs. Car... Er, Ma. You've made it just like home here for us, Ma, and we love it. Thank you. If there's anything you want, Ma, we'll get it for you. Room service. Mm -hmm. What more can you ask for? Well, I'd like to... Ah, uh, good night, Mrs. Carter. Good night. Good night, Ma. Good night. She was laughing and everything. And those two men, they just acted like they owned the place, didn't they, Bumps? Yeah. And what I've looked like my pop when he gets tired and goes to bed. Mrs. Carter didn't expect nothing. I think we ought to tell her. I think we ought to keep on watching. If something happens and we don't tell her, it'll be awful. But if she finds out where Larry is, it'll be just as bad. I don't know what we ought to do. If we could only use that barn, it'd be a lot easier. Say, fellas, why don't we take it over? I think Pinhead's got something there. Nobody ever uses the old barn. It could be our secret hideout. And we could do lots of undercover work.
fun handling the situation ourselves. Oh, boy. Look, George, I'm getting fed up with this dump. How much longer do we have to hang around? Oh, I think we're about... Uh... What's the idea, you little rock? If I catch you here again, I'll bring you. Now beat it! Oh, look, why don't we do what we came here for and get out? This job has given me the willies. Hey, look, George, we've been stalling long enough. We know where the old woman hides the stuff. Let's get out of here before this guy who wrote the letter, this Dugan, shows up. We're on edge, Rubeck. I said it won't be long now. All right, when? Tonight. Now relax and cool off and let me enjoy myself, will you? Yeah. I'm doing the best I can, George. I just can't get used to these old times. Please, ladies, don't waste my time. I'm not going to ask you again. We mean business. I knew that the first day you came here. It's all very clear now how Larry got into trouble. I know where he is. Frankly, Mrs. Carter, we don't care what you know. Open that safe. No. See, you're going to be a little bit harder to handle than your son. Ah! All right, gentlemen, I'll open it for you. There you are. 
Arthur, you're a lot smarter than your son. Will you shut up? Oh, don't try to hide it. I know Larry's in prison. I have the slightest doubt you two put him there. So we did, so what? He just happened to be handy. Look, George, more than we expected. Be careful. I guess they didn't figure on starving. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Mrs. Carter. Mrs. Carter. Oh, we could do it again anytime. Now it should work, Mrs. Carter. Enter the phone. Good work, young man. Give me the police. This is Mrs. Carter speaking. Dan Flynn, I want you to send some men over to my house right away. That's it. I'll explain later. Oh, yes. And I want someone to pick up Carolyn Carter and my grandchild. What? Oh, no, not that. They're going to live with me from now on. It's sure a fine thing you've done for the kids, Mrs. Carter. Well, that's nothing to what they did for me. I think I ought to tell Carolyn the news we got from New York about Larry coming home in a few days. He's been cleared. Don't you bother telling her. I'll do that myself. And a great deal more, too. If it hadn't been for my stupidity, Larry would never have left Middleville. Get used to this. I'm going to take up a lot of this youngster's time from now on and make it a little easier for you, Carolyn. Thank you. Let's sing hoorah for fun each and every one. Come on and let's make gladness ring. 
Start each day with loud hooray, and all together, shout, rock, 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 rock. Let's enjoy every girl. 